In this video, we're going to talk about shared web hosting versus WordPress web hosting and also where should you host your data. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the digital alchemist and in today's video, we're going to talk about web hosting. More precisely, we'll talk about regular shared hosting versus WordPress shared hosting. And that came through a question on one of my previous videos and the video is how to approach a client for website design. So I got this question from Pella Carlson and the comment says, great and important video, Casino. How do I do if clients are both in Europe and US, which web hosting to use and why? Now I get that asked a lot as well as should you choose WordPress web hosting or just regular web hosting? So I thought I would make a video to address both those questions. Now, one thing I'd like to address is the fact that sometimes it's hard to recommend web hosting companies because in the past I've worked with some web hosting companies and the service was great, the support was great and everything was great. And then they get purchased by a larger company and then things start to go south. Not all of the time, but sometimes it does. And you know, when we create videos here on YouTube, they can stay here for years. So if people happen to watch a video where we recommend a web hosting company like five years later, when things have changed, then it can be tricky. So you should always do your own research. I'm going to share which hosting company I've used and that I, I could recommend today. And I truly hope that they're going to maintain good service, good support. But that is also valid for anything that I recommend here on YouTube. I'll always recommend stuff at the time I'm using it because I like the product. I believe in the product. But of course, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. And that's even more true for web hosting companies because things come and go. And it's, it's really important where you host your website. It can make or break your success. So, so you should always do your own research. And also you should always have a plan B in case things go south. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dive in. So first of all, let's take a look at why the data uh, location is important. So I typed JDPR hosting in Europe within Google, and this is the first result. So it says the regulatory nature of the JDPR will push migrating businesses and cloud providers to adopt the following approaches. European businesses should choose data hosting in a European country, not the UK, which will be leaving the EU and so on. Basically, maybe you're not in the, U the EU, so you think, okay, this is not for you. But I get bad news. So if we take a look at what does JDPR mean? Um, so this is the first result, uh, general data protection regulation. The general data protection regulation is a European Union privacy law that comes into effect on May 25, 2018. So that was a few years ago. And here it says the JDPR is a legal framework that sets guidelines for the collection and processing of personal information from individuals who live in the European Union. Now, you may think that JDPR does not apply to you because you live in the US or somewhere else on the planet, but unfortunately, yes, the JDPR applies to the US and all other countries worldwide. This is because Article 3 of the JDPR, which defines the law's territorial scope, states that it not only applies to companies in the EU, but also to companies outside of the EU that serve EU residents. So basically, it could, I mean, it can be outraging for other countries and might say, well, you, you are imposing your law upon us. But what we're starting to see is that some other countries are creating similar laws to JDPR and they are imposing that on the rest of the world also. So maybe one of these days we get uh, like 200 new rules for uh, each JDPR version. I mean, that's a nightmare, but hey, uh, don't kill the messenger. So basically, yes, even if you are in the US or anywhere else and you serve uh, EU residents, you're supposed to comply with the law. And as you saw, the law says that uh, the data for European residents should be served from a uh, data center in the EU. So that explains that. And that's really important for, for what I'm going to talk about next. So... A2 Hosting is a company that I've used in the past and actually um, I had really good results. I was really happy with the service. But nowadays I decided to move to a local solution because it was easier because I need to come up with custom solutions. So in my case, 
I had to move away from any of the major web hosting companies actually. Now, why A2 hosting? Well, apart from the fact that I've used our services, the first reason is that with JDPR in mind, they offer data centers in the US, but also in Europe and in Asia. So at least if you need to host in Europe, you can select the, uh, the Amsterdam server and you select that once you actually register for the services, you purchase the services, they're going to ask you, where do you want to host the data? And then you can pick Europe, Amsterdam, if you need to host in Europe. And if for some reason you need to be hosted in the US, then fair enough. They get two data centers there and you may want to be uh, hosting in Asia. Now, I know there are CDNs where you can replicate the content, but this is where the main content is actually stored. So once again, with JDPR and similar laws in mind. Now, I'm not a lawyer, so you should always consult your own lawyer or you can contact A2 Hosting you know, directly just to know if you would comply with the various laws wherever you are located. But this is my experience with them. Now, when you take a look and you type A2 host, hosting on Google, uh, you see various websites uh, with the review. So I'm not going to go through each of them. You never know really what's on those websites. But usually when I'm looking for a new company, a new type of service, that's the first filter. I usually, usually type it uh, on Google and I see what, you know, how many stars, what people say. But of course, you need to dig deeper because like I said, some companies, they're great. And when I used um, some of the, those web hosting companies, they were great. And then you never know what happens. But I've only heard good things about A2 hosting. And that's why I have an affiliate link uh, for them. But you should always do your own research. Now, I've been happy with A2 hosting. And I know many people are. And if you are really interested, then you'll find the affiliate link to A2 hosting in the description below. Or you can just go to casino.com forward slash A2 hosting. Like I said, always do your research. And I'm going to give you uh, my tip, actually, if you want to find um, a good web hosting company or just if you want to test with A2 hosting. So if you go to their website, they have um, a lot of different plans. So it can be kind of overwhelming to understand what you should choose. Now they have shared hosting, WordPress hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, dedicated hosting, and the sell domains. And then they get enterprise solutions. So it can be uh, kind of confusing. So shared hosting is most of the time what, it, what you're going to use. Then they have dedicated WordPress hosting, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Then they have VPS hosting, and VPS hosting that you see here is actually a virtual private server. So it's not a dedicated server, but it's a machine where they're going to be far less websites than on the regular shared hosting. Because in case you didn't know, shared hosting is basically you sharing a server, so a computer with many, many, many other clients. So you can have thousands of websites, depending on each company have different quotas. But uh, basically, you're competing for resources, bandwidth, and so on, on uh, one machine. And with the virtual private server, uh, you're in control. You can actually set your own um, settings. On the, on the hosting and you have less uh, clients on the server, on the, on the virtual private server. And then you have dedicated server uh, that's much more expensive, but you have a dedicated server. So if you need that, then you know what it's all about. Okay, so usually you, you would uh, pick web hosting services. So here the four plans starts at $299 uh, up to $1499. So basically what's going to change is the first plan, you get one website and limited uh, SSD storage. On the second website, you, uh, on the second plan, sorry, you get unlimited websites, you get unlimited uh, SSD storage. So I would not recommend start a plan. Uh, I would go for drive at the bare minimum. And uh, then you get uh, free automatic backups. Then you get the turbo plan, which is $9.99, uh, at least today with 50% off. But honestly, it's like they're almost always uh, at, the, at those prices. And uh, with this, you get the turbo option up to 20 times faster. It doesn't mean it's gonna be 20 times faster. It's said up to 20 times faster. And I'm gonna give you my tip in a moment. And the last plan is the turbo max for $14.99, 
where you get everything from the other plants plus five times more resources and i guess it's the computer resources the server resources so that was shared hosting now how can you know which one to choose like i said i wouldn't take the first plan uh, unless you just need one website and you know you're not going to need more you don't want automatic backups and that kind of stuff i would go at the bare minimum for the drive plan now out of the three remaining plans how do you know which one is the best one for you and is the turbo boost and the turbo max i mean do they really make a difference so basically if you're in business and you're selling websites for a living or maybe you want to create a website because you have an id and you want the best possible performance what i would do is i would pick three plans so let's say they have a trial i would take one plan in trial and i'll create a second account and a third account and i will pay for one month you know maybe it's going to be a tad uh, more expensive than than that but okay let's say let's say you had to pay for the three three of these so five plus ten plus fourteen and nine so basically 30 bucks and let's say you have to add 10 bucks on top of that because you only take one month so let's say you had to pay 40 bucks and what i would do i would spend those 40 bucks now i know you you might say uh you will lose some money but you won't lose money because at the end of the day you will know which service is faster so you're going to create better uh served websites for your clients or for yourself time is money so what is 40 bucks in the grand scheme of things so what i would do is i would clone one of my existing websites um and then i would clone it on each of those um hosting plans and it's just about investing to find out what what's the best one and then i would just really measure the speed and uh, a lot of various elements on the website with tools like uh, pingdom which are free tools gt metrics and so on but i will also do real life tests not just based on the metrics i would really uh serve from a, from a mobile from a tablet uh, from a 4g connection or 5g whatever you have or 3g maybe where you live and then from wi-fi and i would i would test like extensively for a week i would ask other people to test and once i'm I'm really confident let's say that the best one is really the the turbo boost then i would go all in and take the plan you know for a year or or more i'll try to get the better price otherwise whichever plan you're going to choose you will never know and then you might think okay i'm just going to upgrade but maybe uh the turbo max doesn't make that much of a difference from the turbo turbo boost but it costs 30 percent extra but you will never know until you actually try it for yourself so you must be ready to invest in yourself. I talk about that a lot. And this is not a waste of money. On the contrary, it really depends on the, the perspective you have. Okay, and with that out of the way, the next question is, should you go for shared hosting? I mean, the regular hosting, or should you go for WordPress hosting? And that's precisely my next point. Okay, so now we are on the WordPress hosting plan page. And as you can see, the pricing is exactly the same. So at least we're going to compare apples to apples because pricing was at least on A2 hosting is the same thing. So that being said, what is WordPress uh, dedicated hosting? So what is WordPress hosting? WordPress hosting from A2 hosting offers you all the tools you need to power and run your WordPress websites. Just like WordPress, our servers are designed for ease of use and performance. At A2 hosting, WordPress comes pre-installed on your hosting account that means you don't have to worry about downloading WordPress, uploading it to your server and configuring it. Instead, you'll be contacted with your WordPress login information. So basically, you don't have to install WordPress the manual way. It comes pre-installed. Now, what exactly is A2 Optimize WordPress? A2 Optimize is a product of our team of WordPress experts who notice a concerning trend of users loading their WordPress sites down with plugins to try and get the fastest, most secure setup possible. So I think they're talking about uh, caching plugins. Unfortunately, in most instances, too many plugins can actually make a WordPress install slower and less secure. That's because each install plugin generally slows down WordPress and so on. This is where A2 Optimize came into play. A2 Optimize WordPress is a result of our team of optimization experts determining the most secure and highest performing setup by testing a number of configurations. Trust us, they tested a lot of WordPress configurations. At A2 Hosting, you get this pre-configured 
A2 optimize WordPress setup right out of the box when sign when you sign up with us. Okay, so basically it, it, basically it comes with a pre-optimized setup. Now, if I recall, I, I've used both. And the thing is, it worked really well, but unfortunately it was incompatible with one of the plugins that I was using. I mean, that was really odd, but that plugin wasn't compatible, but it took me some time to figure that out. So eventually I went back to shared hosting. Now, something else to keep in mind when it comes to WordPress dedicated hosting is that some companies proceed on making automatic updates and some will even refuse to install some plugins. I think it's WP Engine. I'm not sure, but I know some companies, they will just, you know, refuse, uh, flat refuse that you install some plugins. And I was not okay with that because sometimes you need to test something, you need to test a few plugins. Sometimes they might think that a plugin is not good, but just because that plugin hasn't made it to their list yet. And if you're in the middle of a project and you really need to work and test something, then I think it can really uh, be a problem. So my key rule is that I just went back to regular shared hosting and of course you're entitled to your own opinion and it depends really on the company. I'm not talking specifically about A2 hosting or this or that company, but what I'm saying is if you pick a plan for dedicated WordPress hosting that's so restrictive that you won't be able to decide when you want to update your plugins and you won't be able to decide uh, which plugin you want to use, then for me, it's a no-go. So what I would do uh, basically is go simply with the shared hosting. And if you choose a web hosting company and a web hosting plan that comes with cPanel, basically cPanel is like your dashboard uh, where you can change all the settings for your website. Most of the time when you have cPanel, you have Softaculous and Softaculous is a script service where you can install WordPress, you can install PrestaShop, you can install many different tools like WordPress, but just with a couple of clicks. So if I look at uh, A2 hosting, so these are the Startup Drive, Turbo Boost and Turbo Max plans. And if I take a look and I look for cPanel, all four plans come with cPanel. And if I look for Softaculous, as you can see <laughs> just below here, all four plans come with uh, cPanel, uh, with Softaculous. So you get a one-click WordPress install and so on. So basically, if you're looking for a web hosting company where you can easily install WordPress and where you comply with the JDPR law and actually uh, laws that require your data to be in a data center, either in Europe, in the US or in Asia, I think A2 hosting is a good fit. So I hope that you get value out of this video and that it's going to help you make a decision uh, whether you want to pick A2 hosting or any other web hosting company. Now, if you do want to use A2 hosting, you can use my affiliate link if you go to casino.com forward slash A2 hosting. And of course, you'll find the link in the description below. Affiliate links mean that I do get a commission if you purchase after clicking on one of my links. But I've just explained why I recommend A2 hosting. And the commissions help support this channel for me to keep on creating free content. So if you enjoyed this video, please like it as it really, really helps growing the channel. And if you know someone that could benefit from it, please share it now. Now, if you want more videos around the creation of websites, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Oh, and by the way, if you want a killer brand identity for yourself or for your clients, I created a brand identity guidelines template that you can download on my website for free. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you are interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. So that's it for this video. Make sure you don't miss the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success. Thank you.